Although there is no lack of information on miracle batteries, the industry perks up its ears when the biggest automaker in the world reveals one. Toyota claims that traction batteries will be half as big, half as heavy, and half as expensive. Is the Japanese company kidding or is that a realistic scenario? In Germany, Toyota's showrooms now only have one BEV model available, the BZ4X. Without a doubt, Toyota didn't give the SUV any love. For instance, it was unable to reliably reach the maximum charging power. An update solved a problem and made it better. Although preconditioning is the minimal requirement for a modern BEV, there is yet no route planner that meets this requirement. The BZ4X, which was conceptually skillfully designed, makes it very evident that we could if we so desired. Although we truly don't want to. Yet. To be fair, the Lexus RZ450e will soon follow on the same foundation. The UX300e is an additional theoretical option, however due to the CHA demo connector, it is still only a concept. Previously, Toyota stated that it would soon start selling a large number of BEV cars. The potential BZ3 sedan, for instance, has an 800 volt system with LFP cells in a cell-to-body arrangement, just like the conceptually comparable BYD seal. The Japanese firm prefers to maintain control over everything. It is safe to infer that Toyota put a lot of work into the creation, design, and production of the BZ3, rather than merely turning it into a BYD seal with a different body. Where does that leave Toyota, though, is still an open question. What is the BEV strategy of the biggest automaker in the world? For both our liquid and solid state batteries, we are seeking to radically transform the situation, according to Kiji Kaita, president of the Research and Development Center for CO2 Neutrality, who told the Financial Times. They would be too big, heavy, and expensive. This projection was accompanied by the guarantee that in the future it would be possible to attain 1,000 miles of range and 10 minutes of charging time, saying, in terms of potential, we will aim to halve all of these factors. German-British expert Matthias Schmidt advised followers to never undervalue Toyota. However, a closer examination of Kiji Kata's claims reveals that there isn't much to go on. Making comparisons like the half in size, weight, and price mentioned earlier without providing an original value is a common and meaningless game in the auto industry. Concrete numbers are what we need, but we are not getting them. A range estimate of 1,000 kilometers is thought to be feasible. These statistics are unquestionably based on the performance of current traction batteries. Driving faster than 100 km per hour is essentially prohibited in almost all areas of Japan. The WLTP was consequently modified in line with this. The 1000 km figure may also relate to a perfect constant pace Toyota uses the term cruising range, however it is unclear. This distance is already doable with a fictitious use of 120 kWh and 12 kWh of electricity under ideal circumstances, although a far-fetched interpretation of reality. It is neither a breakthrough nor a record breaker in any way. There is also a lack of context in the notion of 10 minutes of charging time. Should it take 10 minutes to charge a battery from 10% SOC to 80% SOC? CATL from China recently showed that it can be done in just that amount of time with the Qilin battery. Exotic cell chemistry is not what makes this possible. Rather, it is a cooling and heating mechanism that is incredibly effective. Production of the Qilin battery system just started. There isn't a particularly noteworthy competitive innovation from Toyota. Expectations are nevertheless high because the company has a reputation for producing flawlessly and has a wealth of experience managing the buffer batteries in more than 20 million hybrid vehicles. None of the competitors in the field have such a broad and long learning horizon. In a broad declaration released in June, Toyota discloses what it is actually up to. When you read it, you get disillusioned not in a disappointing way, but more in the sense of having to face reality. When compared to its rivals, Toyota's reality is hardly any different. 
The Toyota BZ4X requires approximately 30 minutes to charge from 10% to 80% SOC. Starting in 2026, this time will be reduced to 20 minutes for the same chemistry prismatic NMC cells. This appears to be considerably more attainable than the concurrently claimed doubling of range, which could conceivably only be accomplished by using a significantly larger overall traction battery through improved packaging in the same installation space. Low-cost LFP cells will arrive in 2027 and require 30 minutes for a comparative charge. The range, which has doubled compared to the present BZ4X, will be enhanced by another 10% in 2028. The cause of this is a cell chemistry with even more nickel, such an MC955 for a cathode composition of 90% nickel and 5% of each manganese and cobalt. If these values are expressed as concrete numbers rather than comparisons, they are all merely average. Hyundai's EGMP with its 800 volts system only lasts for 18 minutes, which isn't very good. Not too bad. Some Chinese electric cars require 45 minutes or more. Simply put, Toyota represents the midpoint of the conservative spectrum. Toyota is notably conservative in its explanations of solid-state batteries. They want to start production in 2027 or 2028. The automaker mentions that costs are under review but implicitly implies that they are still too high. Likewise, it appears that the range expansion over a cell chemistry with a high nickel concentration is just 10%. The researchers assert that they have made advances in the charging time of 10 minutes or less. Toyota recently stated that it intends to put possible solid-state batteries in BEVs in addition to hybrid vehicles to serve as buffer storage. If this battery is a real solid-state one with a metallic lithium anode or a semi-solid-state one with a gel or soft powder as the electrolyte, that is yet to be determined. In background talks, specialists point out that the potential of this sort can only be released by a pure lithium anode with a real solid electrolyte. The general consensus in the industry is that Toyota will employ semi-solid-state. Because of many factors, the global market leader permits this uncertainty. The Japanese market is at the center of Toyota's planning, and this is an important first step to grasp. Due to a lack of incentives, the percentage of BEVs among new cars is only about 2% in this country. Toyota, on the other hand, is the only automaker in Europe that, by lowering CO2 emissions from vehicles with internal combustion engines, is able to fulfill fleet restrictions almost entirely without using BEVs. Though this may soon change, for the time being, the widespread adoption of hybrid vehicles makes it possible to easily abide by all applicable CO2 standards. Toyota, on the other hand, indicates that Tesla has evolved into a role model for the Japanese company. And so, what do you think of Toyota's EV plans and its solid-state battery? Let us know your thoughts in the comment box below. If you've watched up to this point, thank you so much. For more videos about EVs, Toyota, Tesla, Ford, and the most recent auto news, please consider subscribing to Tech Addicts.